Hi, I'm Barry List of Informs, and you're watching the latest in an online series about the best ways that your organization can use analytics. This segment is devoted to high-impact analytics teams. Our guest today is Thomas Olofsson, Director of Operations Decisions Support for Google. Thomas, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about Google and your role there in relation to analytics. Sure. So my team at Google, uh, we're a group of quantitative analysts, uh, mostly PhDs, industrial engineering operations research, uh, some statisticians in the team. Uh, we support um, operations at Google. So that's forecasting and planning for the cloud infrastructure, how many data centers we need to build, where to build them, how to manage the fleet of servers that we have, uh, the deployment and utilization of those, how to manage our network and how that's deployed. Uh, so it's modeling support for all the, uh, the infrastructure planning decisions. As a first look, as a first step to looking at teams, let's look at individuals who work in analytics. What do you mean by skills that are represented by the letter T or the letter I? Sure, so I, th I think of uh, T-shaped skills as kind of the generalist skill set where the, the bar on the T represents the breadth of skills. Uh, domain expertise in an area, uh, broad analytical skills, um, some project management skills to kind of work with stakeholders, drive results, and then the, the kind of the uh, vertical on the T represents a specialization in an area. So everybody on the team uh, uh, has a different area of, of specialization, but they also have the breadth where they can, anybody can be staffed on any project, uh, and everybody has something to learn from everybody else. Uh, that's the model that, that's worked well for me as a as a, a, a team of, of analysts that works broadly in the organization. Uh, the I uh, skill is more the, the technical specialist, uh, where there are certainly roles uh, for that skill as well. Uh, we just have to make sure you have uh, kind of the critical mass of problems to really be able to leverage the, the depth. Um, so for example, working in an R&D role or working on a product, you might need an optimization specialist for that role. Uh, in my team, we tend to look more for generalists in the T-shaped skill sets. Mm -hmm. You've spoken of four skills or biases that analytics professionals have. What are they? Uh, so I think there's, we can speak about soft skills and technical skills, mm -hmm. and then sort of within the technical skills, uh, there's a lot of ways to slice and dice it, but sort of broadly, I think about the four areas of uh, kind of the traditional operations research, sort of modeling problems uh, at an abstract uh, level. And then there's the statistician skill set, which is kind of starting with the data looking for insights from the data. Um, and there is a uh, computer science skill set, sort of how do we make models that are scalable, how do we automate things, how do we get at big data. Um, and there's, uh, I would add a fourth, that's kind of the strategic planning skill set, which may be more of the traditional McKinsey consultant type of skill, but I think very healthy to have in the mix to sort of be asking the right questions, make sure we're working on the right problems. And what's the value in cross-pollinating these skills? Uh, ultimately, it's, it's having a higher impact in the organization to be able to solve uh, business problems and not just technical problems. And I think there's a, there's a tremendous benefit for the individuals as well, as if you have people from different backgrounds who are working together on, on uh, the same problems, uh, that's where I think a lot of the learning happens. And I think once somebody's finished with school, that's the most effective way people can learn and develop is to be part of a team with other analysts that, uh, that they have a lot in common with, but they also have different things they can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. How do leading teams convert analytics into action? Uh, I, I think it's, uh, th there's a number of different models, uh, sort of engagement models for how to work with the organization. Uh, a couple that I'm familiar with uh, uh, is a consulting model, kind of an internal consulting model. Uh, that's the model that we had uh, in my old team at HP, uh, and there were uh, lots of different business groups at HP with similar problems, network design, inventory planning, so we could uh, develop expertise across uh, practice areas and go work with those different business units solving similar problems. At Google, the engagement model is, is much more of a staff role sort of embedded in the organization, um, staff and, and developing tools. Google has one infrastructure, uh, there's, there's one organization that manages operations, and there's lots of different problems that are sort of nested and linked to each other. Um, so, it, you know, there it's, uh, it's less of a consulting kind of project where you go in and three months later you sort of deliver something, and it's more of working on a longer term roadmap, two to three years, for how do we 
develop the right systems perspective on all of these interconnected problems. At the risk of getting a little wonky, how do you adapt your work to the data ecosystem, as you call it? Yeah, so, so data is, is, our, is our lifeblood. We depend on it. And I think you sort of have to adapt to how you can get data in your organization. So I think there's a few different ways uh, that, uh, of getting access to data, uh, depending on how I, the IT function is structured. One is if you have very distributed data, if there's not a centralized IT and each business group sort of has their own uh, data, uh, then I think the consulting model kind of works well where you, you, you have to work with that organization and ask them to help you get the data. Um, the other is a, a centralized IT um, where you have to go and essentially negotiate with IT to get the data that you want. Uh, the advantage there is you, you have centralized data, but uh, it may be more difficult to access. Um, and the, I, th I think the, the best model is if you can democratize data, if you have it in a, a centralized uh, fashion that everybody is referencing the same uh, data stores, but everybody, or at least all the engineers and analysts, can directly access it, directly querying it. Uh, and I think that's, that's the model to aim for if you're, if you're on the IT side, is, is to think of, of IT as a service where the analysts can all directly access the data. You offer three timeless principles about the ways that analytics teams can succeed. Could you review them? The first is about framing problems. Sure. So I, th I think this is um, making sure you're, you're working on the right set of problems to have the highest impact is worth spending a lot of time on and sort of always be questioning, is this the right portfolio of projects where with the analytical skills we have, we can have the greatest impact? And then once we get into a problem, sort of continually asking questions, asking why, how do, what's the root cause of, of this problem? Uh, how do we frame and structure this problem? So fundamentally the skill there is, it's about curiosity and sort of asking the right questions. And your second timeless principle is about earning trust. Right, so this is, I think, key to getting any analytical recommendation or tool implemented is uh, at the end there, there are people that make decisions and connecting with them and, and building their trust and confidence in your recommendation uh, is, is how you get things implemented. So it's not let's go work on something for 12 months and come up with an answer and then sort of sell people on the answer. It's involving people along the way, listening, getting their feedback, sort of rapidly iterating, and then making sure we can communicate uh, our tools or, or recommendations in a way that builds on people's intuition, where they really can understand it and believe it, uh, and it's sort of opening up the black box. And finally, there's the value of small gains, as you put it. Right. Uh, so it, that's being essentially analysts who are results-driven and motivated by um, getting results, seeing changes in the business, seeing decisions get made or processes changed, and you know, not focusing on an, an academic topic, but focusing on let's, let's try and change behavior and let's do it at a stepwise fashion, one step at a time. Let's not try to hit a home run and you know, build a model and 12 to 18 months later hope that it's a, a big bang success. I think that, that rarely works. It's sort of every quarter, let's try to build on what we did last quarter, make things a little bit better and uh, bring people along the way with us. Thanks, Thomas Olofsson of Google, and thank you for watching this quick take on analytics from INFORMS, the Institute for Operations Research and the Management Sciences. For more information, visit us on the web at www.informs.org. Thank you.